Thanks for joining us for our weekend edition of KSLA this morning. Another violent day across the Arklatex. Three separate shootings left one man dead and two others hurt in the last 24 hours. The first shooting happened just after 11 Saturday morning in Longview. Police responded to the 1200 block of 2nd Street on reports of gunfire. At the scene, officers found one man dead with a gunshot wound and learned another person had driven themselves to a hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Anyone with information is asked to contact Longview Police. Less than 50 miles away in Wascom, a man was hurt when he was shot multiple times on South Lake Street just after 5 Saturday evening. Police say they've identified a suspect and are trying to locate him. He was driving a white four-door sedan that was likely a, to a Toyota. The victim is in stable condition and is expected to survive. Here in Shreveport, police are investigating a drive-by shooting that left one man hurt. Police say four shots were fired from a gold car traveling down Navajo Trail. One man was shot in the foot and transported to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Anyone with information is urged to contact Crime Stoppers. And the Caddo Pair Sheriff's Office is on the scene of a fatal wreck that happened just before 6.30 this morning in the 5100 block of Highway 173. Both lanes of that roadway are currently closed while deputies investigate the accident and remove a tree from the roadway. We're expecting more updates as the day goes on. Make sure that you download our free KSLA News 12 app. It's, your, it's our way of giving you the first alert to any breaking news and updates on developing stories that we cover during the day. Good morning, Jessica. I know that we had a pretty rainy week. What are we expecting <laughs> this upcoming week? Good morning, Destiny, and thankfully it's going to be a lot drier uh, for the work week. We do have rain in the forecast for the work week, but it's not looking nearly as bad as it was for last week. So here's a look out of our NSU sky cam. Can't really see what's going on up there. Shun sun is shining fairly bright this morning. There are going to be times where we are going to see a lot more sunshine, especially through, uh, throughout the day today, but we do still have uh, some clouds in place out there this morning with us. Here's a look at temperatures as you're heading out the door right now. We're at 70 degrees in Shreveport and in Marshall, Texas. 68 currently in Idabel. The Queen sitting at 71, 72 over in Texarkana and a cool 64 over in Natchitoches. But things will surely be warming up fairly fast this morning. So temperatures around 9 in the mid 70s, low 80s in the uh, early afternoon hours, late afternoon, though, that's when things will start to heat up and we'll be looking at temperatures uh, somewhere in the mid and few areas, maybe even in the upper 80s. And then temperatures still staying in the 80s around 6, mid 70s around 7 o'clock this evening. Again, you can see clouds will continue to still be a part of our day here, but it's not going to be all bad. We do have temperatures in the low 80s over in East Texas, mid to upper 80s here in Northwest Louisiana, I-30 in Northward. Temperatures will be in the mid 80s as well, and something that we have to go along with the heat is the humidity. Today it's going to be feeling a little bit more humid, uh, but tomorrow we're going to be between humid and muggy, and unfortunately Tuesday and Wednesday uh, we're, we're going to be a little bit muggier as well, so as you go outside, definitely going to feel it as you're not uh, going to be able to cool off just as quickly. It's going to be very sweaty out there. Here's a look at future track showing that as we go throughout the day, continuing to keep some clouds in place here, but mostly staying dry on your Sunday. Uh, there could be some very isolated scattered showers uh, further further to the south this afternoon, but again, most of us will remain dry Monday as well, looking dry, but some clouds in place, especially for East Texas. Here's a look at our KSLA First Alert weather app. You can always download that and keep that with you on the go. We have uh, forecast videos to show you what to expect as you go throughout the day. Uh, and as we can see today, it's going to be fairly cloudy and we are looking at temperatures warming up into uh, the 80s. Here's a look at your seven day temperatures still not really moving a lot. We're looking at temperatures tomorrow around 84 degrees, 85 on Tuesday with a 30% chance of rain on Tuesday and Wednesday coming up in uh, a couple of minutes. I'll show you the rain chances for the middle of the work week. Temperatures will stay in the mid 80s for Wednesday and then looking at a warm up potentially on Thursday and Friday closer to the upper 80s. And then as we look at next week, low end rain chances, temperatures uh, in the low to even upper 80s temperatures though this morning we're in the 60s you can expect that for monday and tuesday but after that we'll, we'll warm up to where temperatures in the morning will be around 70 degrees destiny 
It's that time of year again. Many of you are getting ready to send your kids to summer camps and even planning vacations. But now health leaders are recommending that you get your 12 to 15 year olds vaccinated. Caitlin Rust has more. And my kids are going to an away camp in July and I wanted them definitely to get both doses so they would be fully protected when they went to camp. For some parents, it's a no brainer. We were vaccinated the moment we first could be vaccinated in December. So we look forward to the opportunity for our kids to be vaccinated as soon as they could. However, many parents are hesitant, wanting to make sure they make the best decision for their child. But as we get closer to summer vacations and camps, health experts want to make sure we can get our kids back into the classrooms in the fall. New Orleans public schools have already announced they want students back next year. We also want to protect it if there's going to be a recurrence or a resurgence in the fall. We don't want to start now. Um, you know, these spikes can kind of build over time. So we want to be careful and smart and, and still have fun. The health department says teens have proven to be very effective spreaders. Family physician Dr. Meredith Maxwell says there are so many different kinds of summer camps that parents should look into what the safety measures are that the camp is taking if their kids are not vaccinated. I think that these kids are going to be, you know, gung ho seeing their friends. And I think that, you know, all cares are going to be out the door. They're going to be so excited. So I think that this has the potential to cause a large bump. The Pfizer vaccine has proven to be safe for teens and provides a strong immune response as well as substantially reduces the chance of passing the virus onto someone else. The vaccine has been around for a while now and we've seen kind of what it can do um, so far. And I think that the repercussions of actually getting the virus spreading it to your loved ones, those who are immunocompromised, maybe the baby in front of you in line or the elderly person behind you at the supermarket is so much greater than the what ifs of a vaccination. Maxwell says if you have questions, ask your pediatrician, not Facebook. You get so many mixed messages if you look at social media, what people put on Facebook, but I think the science is there to show that it's very safe and very effective. The Louisiana Department of Health confirms the state's first two cases of a new COVID strain known as the India variant or B1617. There are multiple strains circulating Louisiana and this is just the latest one. Doctors say it appears to infect younger people rather than older, which is different than what we've seen with earlier versions of the virus. While it's of concern, there is no reason to panic. Dr. Lucho Miao has LSU Health with LSU Health says the vaccine seems to protect against this strand and it doesn't appear to have different symptoms from the other variants. But he says the India variant is more resistant to antibodies, specifically resistant to antibodies from people who have already had COVID. So the scenario that we want to avoid is the virus continuing to spread and mutating and improving itself uh, in the unvaccinated population and then coming back to haunt us when the, our vaccine induced immunity starts declining because we don't know how long it's going to last. So people who say, hey, I've already had it, I don't need to be vaccinated, they're not going to be very well protected against this one. Dr. Miel says this strand is mutating and has already spawned three similar strands. Right now, the best protection against these strands of COVID-19 are the vaccines. Every infection that is prevent that's prevented means the virus has one less chance to mutate. Everyone 12 years of age and up is el eligible to receive the vaccine. Good Sunday morning and welcome back. As you're headed out the door this morning, looking at our John Harvey Toyota Skycam, you can see this big ball of sunshine out there, but still surrounded by a lot of clouds. And that's what you can expect as we go throughout the morning hours. Temperatures will quickly be warming up already in the low 70s around 9 o'clock this morning. And I mean, even now, uh, but some areas still in the 60s. But by noon, most of us will be in the upper 70s to low 80s and then low to mid 80s around 3 o'clock this afternoon. Still looking at partly to mostly cloudy skies out there, but more sunshine than I think that we've seen and what we saw yesterday. Here's a look at the rain chances coming up. As I mentioned before, we do have low in rain chances but it does look like Tuesday may be our best shot for seeing some rain and maybe a few isolated thunderstorms as you can see 
some showers and storms making their way into East Texas and parts of Arkansas and uh, Northwest Louisiana moving out by Wednesday morning though could be looking at another round of light showers near the I-30 corridor but really not a whole lot to find here and then things start to clear and dry out for the rest of the work week. Now just want to talk about our first tropical storm of the season. Tropical storm on a form yesterday morning has 45 mile per hour sustained winds moving off to the northeast. No threat to the United States at all. It'll eventually make its way northeast to its doom. But when I give you the first alert to our first storm of the season and the seventh time that we've seen a storm form before the official start on June 1st. I'll take a look at your 12 day forecast in a minute. Destiny. I just haven't grieved and I haven't even screamed. I haven't cried. And they have, there's no empathy for how they do another human being and they let the families continue to suffer. More fallout since Louisiana State Police released video it has of Ronald Green's last moments from two years ago. Green's family says they want the officers held accountable. Michael George has details and we want to warn you this video is disturbing. Ronald Green is pleading with Louisiana State Police officers who wrestle him to the ground following a pursuit in May 2019. After excerpts were published by the Associated Press, state police released 40 minutes of body camera videos, which show Green being tased and punched from several angles. Officers say he continued to resist. Green can be heard repeatedly saying, I'm sorry. The FBI is investigating Green's death and what led up to it. But on the tape, Trooper Chris Hollingsworth is heard explaining what happened. I beat the ever-living out of him, choked him and everything else trying to get him under control. And the was still fighting and we were still wrestling with him, trying to hold him down because he was spitting blood everywhere. And then all of a sudden he just went limp. Green's family is suing the Louisiana State Police for wrongful death. They say the agency initially claimed Green died after crashing into a tree during the chase. CBS News has confirmed an autopsy report showed head injuries, a broken breastbone, and a torn aorta were factors in his death. Colonel Lamar Davis. Having, you know, contacted and, and spoken with the Green family, uh, I can feel their pain. The Louisiana State Police fired two of the troopers and suspended another. Last fall, just hours after learning he would be fired, Trooper Hollingsworth died in a single car crash. Michael George, CBS News, New York. President Joe Biden will host George, Flo George Floyd's family at the White House next week on the anniversary of his death. Floyd died at the hands of police on May 25th. Biden first met with the Floyd family in June 2020 when he traveled to Houston to offer condolences. Last month, the president also spoke with George Floyd's brother after a jury convicted former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin in the killing. This latest vi visit comes as lawmakers are likely to miss the president's initial May 25th deadline for passing a bipartisan police reform bill. The town of St. Joseph, Louisiana wants to reinvent itself after falling on hard times. Located in the state's smallest parish and one of its poorest, a few local entrepreneurs are turning around the town's fortune. Dave McN McNamara shows us the rebirth of St. Joseph in the week's heart of Louisiana. When the town of St. Joseph was settled in northeastern Louisiana, it sat along the country's major thoroughfare, the Mississippi River. But as steamboats were replaced by trains and interstate highways, St. Joseph found itself tucked away, nearly out of sight to modern travelers. It was dead. It was absolutely dead. Donna Ratcliffe is the tax assessor of Tensaw Parish. She also owns and is redeveloping a century-old building in downtown St. Joseph, trying to give her town new life. Everybody wants to, to do something to save our little town, but now it's just so happy and things are changing. Ratcliffe's building was once her father's Western Auto Store. Now her daughter-in-law, Leslie Ratcliffe, has a second floor art studio that overlooks Plank Road, St. Joseph's Main Street. A few doors down, Natalie Schoff has expanded her women's clothing boutique, 
bringing the newest styles to this small town. It's a domino effect. People are seeing the energy and great things happening and people want to support and people want to get on board. So I, I think in a few years, Plank Road is, is, is going to be the place to visit. I thought I'd made it in the big city and next thing I knew I was back here because my father talked my husband into coming back to help with the family business. Rebecca Vizard runs a home decorating business that she started in uptown New Orleans. She crafts high-end pillows from antique fabrics, some costing thousands of dollars, and she ships to customers worldwide. When I see the sign on the front of your building it says global headquarters. It has to be a first for St. Joe. Well, yes, that was a little bit of a joke because before I was sending pillows all over the world from my little garage studio. And so when I decided to finally open something here, I couldn't help. I had to put global headquarters. Next door, I found Paul Connolly of Baton Rouge. As a frequent visitor to St. Joseph, he and his wife decided to open a pop-up art gallery with an apartment for visiting artists. Every time we've come here, it's gotten better over the years. It's just, you know, little energy, little energy, little energy. And uh, we like being part of the energy. Nestled between fashion shops, antique and gift stores and galleries, the Tensaw Parish Library has a museum full of history from the plantation, farming and steamboat days in this part of the Louisiana Delta. I think every building will be full of something. People are wanting the smaller areas. They want to come where, you know, it's, it's not so hectic and they just like the lifestyle here. It's rebirth in this once dying town where people realize they have something worth saving. There's an old saying that goes, see a penny, pick it up all day long, you'll have good luck. Well, today is a perfect day for that because it's National Lucky Penny Day. Nowadays, they're mostly made out of zinc and it costs 1.4 cents to make each one cent coin. And while some economists have called for the penny to be abolished, others aren't so sure. But if you find one lying in the street, pick it up because as the old saying just I just mentioned, that coin could really give you good luck. And speaking of luck, one Florida man caught a lucky break with a scratch off ticket. Curtis Fuller's truck broke down two days before he bought a Florida lottery ticket at a convenience store. And two days before that, his wife's car broke down. But a $5 scratch off ticket turned his fortune quickly around with $1 million in winning. And Fuller says he and his wife will be buying two new vehicles and a new house. I mean, like like <laughs> I just said, that has to be luck. Oh like, my goodness, it, does it even feel like real life? I mean, both your cars break down and then $5 turns into that much money and you can borrow the cars that you want basically. So I guess today, Destiny, if we see a penny, pick it up and then maybe like go play the lottery or something. Yeah, I need to go play the lottery. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But before we get to your final check of the weather with Jessica, listen to this. The world's largest iceberg is floating off of Antarctica after breaking off from an icy continent. Yeah. The European Space Agency says it's about 80 times the size of Manhattan. And scientists don't think the break off is due to climate change. They say it's just a normal process called calving. Since the iceberg has been floating on the ice shelf, it won't even cause sea level rise. It won't even cause the sea level to rise when it melts. Okay, that makes me feel better. As long as it's not due to climate change and <laughs> uh, we don't have to have uh, sea level rising, uh, that's gonna be, that would be awful. So, um, so pretty good news with that. Here's a look at your 12 day forecast today. It's gonna be fairly warm. Temperatures will be in the mid 80s. Some areas only get into the low 80s today. Plenty of uh, clouds in place, but still gonna be some sunshine out there. We'll have more sunshine uh, throughout the work week. Rain chances though are back Tuesday and Wednesday. Temperatures will hold on to the mid 80s until the middle of the work week. And then by the end of the week, Thursday and Friday are looking very warm. Temperatures near 90 degrees. Next Monday, uh, we are looking at Memorial Day so far staying dry. Temperatures will continue in the 80s. Desi? Well, thanks so much for watching KSL News 12 this morning, and don't forget to stay aware and stay alert. Have a great rest of your Sunday.